Was the president insensitive or realistic in his Independence Day broadcast? And does PDP really have the impudence to criticize the president's speech as alleged? Find out. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladende. Welcome, this is Plots Politics, and we want to look at several issues. The traditional presidential broadcast on October 1 has been the talking point in many quarters, especially among politicians. The TUC describes the comparison of price of oil with that of Saudi Arabia, Ghana, and other countries as ridiculous. PDP also says the president was insensitive. Joining us to throw more light on the president's speech is the senior special assistant to the president on public affairs, Ajuri Ingilale. Good evening, Ajuri. Good evening to you, my dear brother, and a belated happy Independence Day to you. Yeah, and same to you over there. Okay, let's get talking. Um, I'm sure you are not averse to some of the criticism that have actually greeted the speech made by the president. Let's start with the one that was so prominent about the defense on the price of oil. There are beliefs that maybe the president shouldn't have talked about it, having had that kind of conversation with the labor unions. Do you, um, what do you have to say to those people who, who owe that opinion? Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity to be with you this evening. It's always a privilege to be on your platform. Uh, let me just start by saying that uh, the, the president is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, and President Mohamedou Buhari understands uh, that it was the votes of Nigerians who elected him that has given him uh, the, the power to, uh, you know, formulate and implement policy in this country. Uh, as a result of that understanding, uh, the president does not play uh, with the issue of ensuring that Nigerians have all of the facts uh, that they require at any given point in time, particularly in a point, at a point of difficulty. And uh, of course, this has held true. Uh, the notion that, the, that because uh, the president has uh, successfully, or the presidential administration has successfully concluded uh, negotiations with the labor union, that that means somehow that he should not uh, directly interface with the people of this country, I think is uh, a mistaken perception. I think the, the, the real... Uh, mode of, 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 of leadership is to be able to communicate directly with people what it is you're doing and why you're doing it. So when the president says that uh, there's no going back, he says it out of a total uh, appreciation uh, for what our people are going through, but telling them also that at a time when we have lost 60% of our revenues, we simply cannot pretend as if, we, as if nothing has changed. Around the world, you're seeing uh, major uh, suffering as a result of the impact of COVID-19 on, 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 on economies across the world. In fact, even in bastions of prosperity, like the United States of America, that everybody cites, you're seeing millions of permanent job losses. You're seeing people evicted from their homes, have no shelter, have no place to go. So the suffering is real and the suffering is everywhere. So what the president was very clear in stating, is, this is where we are and this is why we are here. But if you will be patient with us, I can assure you that we will come out stronger on the other side of this than how we were when we came into it. And I think that that message from Mr. President is the kind of message that a good leader, uh, you know, is able to uh, present uh, to the people who elected him. Okay, let's look at uh, what he said. And that actually uh, looks like what really sparked the anger, the comparison with Saudi Arabia. People also reminded him, why can't he compare the minimum wage of average people living in Saudi Arabia, that uh, that price difference uh, was totally unnecessary. Quoting his critics now. Thank you very much uh, for that, because of course, uh, what you have cited here is really what we have seen on many, uh, in terms of headlines on many of the major news newspapers in the country. Uh, I, I think it's quite unfair uh, what we've seen. This tendency uh, on the parts of some actors, uh, uh, in the mass media to try and take 
the, the, the very tiny uh, select clips of what the president is saying and blow it up in such a manner that that is all he said without providing the context of what it is that the Mr. President was communicating. Let me specifically address uh, the Saudi Arabia comparison. The president was making a very clear statement. And anybody who watched the speech or has, a, has read a copy of the speech would agree with me uh, about the truth and the fact uh, that when he cited Saudi Arabia, he also cited our contemporaries. He also cited our West African neighbors, many of whom, by the way, and this is very important, are also oil producing and, and are seeing uh, the pump price in their country average uh, 320 naira per liter. Right now, we are talking about 162 naira per liter in Nigeria. And of course, our people are not happy because, of course, it, it brings some difficulties, uh, particularly when you compare it uh, to the situation we've had uh, for some time now, where government has obviously been in the business of subsidizing the pump price. So, of course, any time that you're going to have a shift, you, you, you expect that, of course, people are going to feel the burden of that, which is why the president has not done, has not taken this decision until this year, when obviously it became absolutely necessary as a result of the loss of 60% of our revenues. You've seen that when there was relative stability, the president was very reluctant uh, to remove the fuel subsidy simply because he cared so much about the plight of our poor masses, our middle income uh, masses in this country. And of course, in taking that decision, uh, in likening it to obviously uh, Saudi Arabia, he's basically saying, look, even where you have uh, you know, all the production capacity in the world, all the refining capacity in the world in Saudi Arabia, this is what the price actually is. That's all he's trying to communicate with that. But then when you look at what the president said, when he compared us to Chad and Ghana and some of the other uh, of our neighbors, you have to appreciate the fact that some people say, well, look at Nigeria, minimum wage at 30,000 naira. Have you, do you know that in Ghana, the minimum wage in terms of uh, by currency exchange rate is actually less than 30,000 naira uh, in equivalence? So what we are saying is that we, we have uh, our, 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 our fellow uh, uh, West African uh, citizens who are dealing with the, the real pump price, with much worse economic fundamentals, without the income that Nigeria has, without the kind of infrastructure and social investment programs that Nigeria has, and they are able to manage 320 naira uh, per liter uh, pump price. It is difficult to have 162, we agree, but we're saying bear with us because these funds that we're saving, we're able to now apply it into the critical infrastructure that will ultimately bring down the cost of logistics, bring down the cost of transportation, and of course, uh, lead to a situation where we can have more foreign direct investment in factories and industries that will sustainably employ our people all across this country. It is a difficult decision, but it must be taken and it must be taken now. Okay, let's look at another aspect of the speech uh, where um, the president obviously uh, threw some tantrums at some past leaders uh, from PDP. And in clear terms, let me give you some of the quotes so that I am not uh, misunderstood. Is that no government in the past did what we are doing with such scarce resources. We have managed to keep things going in spite of the disproportionate spending on security. Those in the previous government from 1999 to 2015 who presided over the near destruction of the country have now, have now the impudence to attempt to criticize our efforts. And now, a follow-up to this statement was from uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, who also said that uh, he can defend uh, President Obasanjo by extension, his own administration too, that uh, they did pretty well, and he gave the statistics of what they did in terms of debt relief, in terms of the debt profile of the country, that your administration hasn't done well, and therefore that um, attack was unnecessary. What do you have to say? Thank you very much. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, we're very consistent about is dealing in fact uh, we don't do propaganda, we don't do innuendo, we do with fact. And so I want to just uh, look at what uh, we're talking about here. And I would challenge any of our listeners, our viewers, uh, to please fact check everything that I have to say during this conversation to verify whether I'm telling you the truth or not. www.dmo.gov.ng will give you the answers you're looking for. Now, what will it tell you? It will tell you that in 2010, uh, we had a national debt profile of $35 billion dollars. That is, a, 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 that is the, the total, that is the domestic plus external debt, $35 billion, well after debt relief, by the way. Now, 
from 2010 to 2015, right? Five years where we had unprecedented high uh, oil revenues, right? We're averaging between 100 and 120 dollars per barrel. They slammed an additional 30 billion dollars on the national debt. To be very precise, in 2015, what President Muhammad Buhari inherited was 63.8 billion dollars in debt, total, domestic, uh, plus external. The reason why that is important uh, is because, you know, people like to talk about debt relief, debt relief. They're not telling you about the fact that right after debt relief, they slam tens of billions of dollars on the debt without any infrastructure that they can point to, without anything that looked like social investment programs, without anything that looked like anything uh, productive in terms of health care provision, in terms of education, infrastructure, nothing. In addition to that, by the way, that's in terms of earnings and in terms of debt. That is not including the fact that President Obasanjo built a savings of about uh, $68 billion in the excess crude account that was totally uh, swallowed up by uh, the PDP administration between 2010 and 2015. By the time Mr. President took office, in addition to all of the debt that was added, in addition to all of the revenues that were lost, in addition to all of that, the excess crude account, the 50 plus billion dollars in the excess crude account was left at $2 billion by the, pres by the time President Wang Bukhari took office. All of that is important to understand why Mr. President looks at the situation and he says, look, all the money you people had, there is nothing that you will show for it. Did power improve? No. Did you diversify the economy away from oil and gas? No, not even in attempt. By the time President Muhammadu Buhari took office, we were paying $3 billion a year in the importation of rice. We were the largest uh, importer of rice in Africa. Five years later, under this same president, we are now the largest producer of rice in Africa. The reason why we have not had the, oil, uh, the, the same uh, situation that unfolded in 2014, when the oil price crashed in 2014, where the government was not paying salaries, they were not paying pensions, they were not even attempting to fund the capital component of their budget, was because they were paying billions of dollars on uh, food imports. The president over the last five years have been able to effectively substitute all of those food imports with local production, which has allowed us to have an oil price crash this year down to $12 per barrel. And we have still consistently paid salaries. We've consistently paid pensions. And we have consistently funded all of our capital components of our budget. That's why you're continuing to see railways being commissioned. You're seeing roadways and bridges and airports and seaports and power plants and agricultural production continue on in that. Salaries and pensions are paid. All of that is going on because okay. of the financial prudence of this administration. So you cannot blame Mr. President when he looks back and he says, oh, so you spent $16, on, so $16 billion on power and you could not add a single megawatt and you, you are coming to tell us who have managed the economy much more effectively with much less. We have put 15 million people on social okay, intervention Ajuri, programs, Ajuri. built infrastructure across this country, Ajuri. and you're and you're telling us that we're not doing well compared to what you did. Ajuri. You can understand why Mr. President uh, is not happy to hear that. Ajuri, uh, okay, uh, as much as uh, oftentimes we, our take from this side is that um, I think it's high time this current government, uh, you know, left the past administration and looked the way forward. Uh, we are tired of blaming the past government of where we are. And it's probably the reason why the people voted this party in. So well, since you have Mr. gone Kyle, into the let past. Me that, let me answer that. Before because you answer that. One of the problems before you that, that, that we have in this, in, in I will this allow uh, you. national conversation around development, no be politics. This one, no be 2023, 2019 politics. <laughs> this is development about our country, Nigeria. Leave ABC and PDP and all of that. About our country now, if you're looking at things unbiased, dis uh, dispassionately about what has happened in this country over the last uh, two decades, you cannot have a situation where somebody comes out and says, we, we did well for the first 16 years of, 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 of the Fourth Republic. We did very well. We're very proud of our record. When PDP themselves, they came, did they not come out and apologize to Nigerians? What did they apologize to Nigerians for if they did so well? They know they didn't do well. The issue now, the issue now, and the reason I want to respond to your point about having to look back, you cannot say that uh, President Muhammad Buhari has acquired all of the debt in the country, when in fact he has only added a little over $20 billion, $20 billion compared at a time when our oil revenues were half. He has borrowed about $20 billion, put 15 million people on social investment programs, building infrastructure across the country, and all of that. And he has added less money to the debt 
than what we added to the debt from 2010 to 2015, when it was $30 billion that was added to the debt with no infrastructure, no social investment program. This is reality. This is fact. This is not about politics. This is something that you go to dmo.gov.ng and you go and fact check and verify for yourself. So for us now, if somebody is coming to question our record of governance on the basis of uh, you know, empirical data and all of that, we're very happy to have this conversation. In fact, criticism makes anybody better at anything. And President Mohamed Dubuhari is, is looking forward. He watches uh, these programs in the mornings and in the evenings, seeing what experts have to say, seeing what uh, people with differing viewpoints have to say. Look at the Economic Advisory Council that Mr. President put together. On that council, you are going to find people who are on the economic strategy team of the Al-Haji Atiku Abubakar for, for President campaign. So the president is not concerned about whether you are APC or PDP. If you're bringing a, a, a criticism or you're bringing a critical analysis of his administration or any policy, he's, he's happy to hear that. Okay. But what he is saying is that those who directly were, were signing out hundreds of millions of dollars from the Central Bank of Nigeria to fund political campaign, signing out billions of dollars that were meant for the, the fight against Boko Haram to go and fund a political campaign and buy houses in Dubai and London. Those who spent $16 billion on power that Nigerians are not seeing. When he hears from those people, he's not happy because the, the hypocrisy is too much. Okay. It's too much. And in his view, many okay. of these individuals should even be in jail, not to speak Ajuri. of uh, pretending to be saints and pretending to be I, I, uh, economic, I thought, uh, you know, I uh, thought you said we should not go. and all of that. I thought you said we should not go political, but I can see that uh, you still have to mention what the money was spent for. But it's okay. But let's also look at um, another important uh, statement that was made yesterday that has also caused some kind of controversy. And that has to do with uh, the president saying that um, he is a Democrat to the core by allowing election to be free and fair. He, though he didn't make reference to a do, but we can make reference to a do state. But our fear is, what does that suggest? Should the president even talk about allowing free and fair elections? Should he even have a say? We thought it's called an independent national electoral commission. Why should that be a gain for this administration? Well, my dear brother, I, I know, I know you're, you, you asked that question uh, from an idealistic perspective in which uh, all has been well in this country. We have always done the right thing. We have a, a very enviable democracy where politicians do the right thing and ensure that votes count and all of that. If that was our national reality, then your, your analysis, your perspective, your question, your framing of your question would be absolutely right. There should be no credit for that, right? Um, but in view of the reality where you have had a series of fraudulent elections to the extent that uh, one, uh, one of our former presidents came out on the, on the, on the day of his uh, inauguration to publicly lament that he was, he was disgusted by the process through which he became president. This is our history, and we cannot run from our history. So what the president has now done is he said, in a country where uh, presidents and high-level officials have used INEC, have used security agencies, police, to manipulate the outcome of, of elections, uh, to support the agendas of their, their various respective political parties. He has said, those days are over. What we're going to do in this country is ensure that those who work the hardest, who have done well on the ground, who have won the acceptability of their people, right, who have earned the trust of their people and have earned the votes of their people, that those individuals are those who should be in power, whether they're APC, whether they're PDP, which is why the, or APGA, which is why the president was uh, after the Edo election, which by the way, almost everybody has attested is the most free and fair election run in this country in recent times, uh, is he brought governor, uh, governor elect Obaseki to the state house to make that point very clearly that look, the outcome of the election did not favor me. It did not favor my party, but I am happy that, that the election was free and fair. I'm happy that the people of Edo have, uh, have, have voted as they have voted. And we, as, a, as the federal government of Nigeria, under the leadership of President Mohamed Bukhari, are going to ensure that who the people select are the people who are elected and who are the people uh, that will ultimately be inaugurated. And it is that spirit of institution building above selfish political or personal interest 
that is going to take this country to where it has never been before. Those people that the president was referring to when he said the impudence based on their terrible uh, record of governance are the same people who could have never, ever done that. These are people who were impeaching governors uh, with less than a third of the state houses of assembly. So look, this is the history of the democracy. We are making progress. Does Mr. President want everybody to stand up and clap for him? No. But what he is saying is, let us be very honest about the fact that when we see a departure from our, from our terrible history when it comes to electioneering, let us be honest enough as a people to admit it, whether we're PDP or whether the APC, President Mohamed Buhari uh, provided a free and fair election. Okay. And for that, whether or not he's commended, it should be recognized that he has done that. Okay, I, I, I know that uh, you're, you're heading for another meeting, but let's quickly look at the next four minutes to discuss two issues. Now, another important point he made, uh, which I, I call a very, very important point. You know, uh, our 60 years was fraught with civil war, was fraught with uh, military rule, and there are things, some pains and some wounds in the heart of people. And he did say, I read, that we need to begin a sincere process of national healing, and this anniversary presents a genuine opportunity to eliminate old and outworn perception that are always put to test in the lie they always are. Now, this talks about, uh, uh, probably you are one of the people who probably was, have worked on this document. What do you think was going through the mind of the president about the national healing? Well, uh, let me say that I was not involved uh, in the drafting or transmission of this speech, okay. so I can just make that a clear statement. But okay. of course, I, I, like other Nigerians, uh, did witness his speech. I've read copies of his speech and all of that. Uh, let me just say that, you know, he was very clear. I think his words were very un much unmistakable. The president understands uh, that there are realities uh, in, our, in our public uh, domain uh, that lend, uh, you know, credence uh, to a situation in which you have uh, political sponsorship uh, of certain media organization. And the fact that some people have taken a decision already without citing any stations or any politicians by name. Uh, the president has access to intelligence that, of course, uh, Nigerians do not have access to. And so when you see a situation uh, in which uh, some, some uh, narratives are being advanced uh, to try and create as much disunity, as much instability, as much chaos as possible ahead of the next election, hoping that because some people have already lost the argument on development, they've already lost the argument on corruption, they believe that their best chance at retaking power is to make an argument on security, even though uh, security was even worse uh, at the time that they were in office. So there is a, a sponsored attempt by some political organization and some sponsored media houses to create and drum up the, the drums of uh, a drumbeat of disunity as much as possible uh, for narrow political gains. The president is aware of that. Many of the people uh, uh, around the country may or may not be aware okay. of that. And that is all that the president is alluding to. And he's making the point, not for political reasons, but because he wants a, a nation that is going to develop irrespective of political affiliation, ethnic okay. affiliation, religious affiliation. He wants a situation where Nigerians begin to see themselves in each other. Okay. And he wants to ensure that some political actors who are willing to use state resources to try and actively divide people, to try and create okay. chaos and have between people and drum up distrust and all of that, that they are disempowered and that our people know what is going okay, on Ajuri. so that they can see it for what it is and understand that we are not going to have the nation that we want unless all of us agree that okay. all of us, irrespective Ajuri, of these affiliations, me... require all of us to have the Nigeria of our dream that we'll be proud to Ajuri. be to our children and our grandchildren. And that Quickly. is what the president is committed to. Uh, I wish we could... Uh, probably let me give you 30 seconds since I promised uh, one more question. A lot of criticism against this government. You've mentioned so much about the infrastructure, but there seems to be some dissenting voices among the people that there is so much borrowing for the infrastructure. Can you convince them in 30 seconds why we have to do that and what's the repayment plan? Uh, thank you very much. I, I think that there is a, a consensus uh, amongst, amongst those who understand uh, these issues. Uh, who have been paying attention to what's going on in the country, 
that borrowing $30 billion to steal is foolish. And that is what has happened in the past. For us, that is why we have come out to tell our people directly that when we, have, we built Lagos Ibadan Rail Line, for example, and now we're extending it from Ibadan to Kano, uh, that that 2.75% interest loan over the course of 20 years is going to pay itself back because we're going to be able to move uh, tonnage and, uh, and, and, and cargo from our Papa port, decongesting and depressurizing the roads around our Papa port, uh, all the way to their destination along the route to Kano uh, and all of that. So that money is going to, of course, be repaid because it's an economically viable project. The other one that the president commissioned on Tuesday was the Wari Atape rail line, a, st a high speed standard gauge, which for the first time is linking northern Nigeria to southern Nigeria by high speed rail line, which is going to link up with Wari port to give us another evacuation point by high speed rail line so that we will have an earning from that uh, borrowing uh, to be able to pay it back. The same thing with the Ajayokuta, Kaduna, Kano gas pipeline. Okay. We know that it's yes borrowed funds, but we know that that is going to pay, be paid back very quickly because of the economic viability okay. of that project. So every project the president is borrowing for and the capital component of the budget, he is very open with Nigerians about why he's borrowing it, how it's going to be paid back, and the fact that we are not borrowing to steal, we're not borrowing to pay salaries, we're borrowing to build infrastructure that is a wise investment for the future development economically of this country, and we're proud to make those investments, and we're ready to debate anyone okay. who suggests that those investments are, 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 are not correctly made. Thank you so much, Ajuri Ngilale, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Public Affairs. Thank you for your time, and uh, we wish you all the best. It's always a privilege to be with you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, thank you to our viewers. Please stay tuned. We will go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll be talking on the, on the same issue that has to do with the presidential broadcast. Please don't go anywhere.